We have for centuries marveled at the world of the ancient Greeks. A world where the human mind was set free to look beyond the everyday drudgery of life and think of greater things. A time of science, art, and philosophy, dazzling new ideas that they would export to the rest of the world. And at the heart of this age of wonder stood a great city. Not in Greece or Italy, but here on the coast of ancient Egypt, in a place called Alexandria. While the Romans thought of war and the Greeks thought of philosophy, in Alexandria they thought of thought itself. These halls once echoed to the footsteps of Plato, Aristotle and Archimedes. But you might also have found another less well-known face here. He was not a philosopher or poet, but an inventor, and he almost started an industrial revolution 2,000 years ago. They called him Mechanos, the machine man, but we know him as Heron of Alexandria. 2,000 years before the modern day, Heron was building his own machine age and in the process creating devices that still amaze us today. Heron lived in Alexandria at a time when it was the most cosmopolitan city on Earth. This beautiful city, once home to the legendary Queen Cleopatra, was the brains behind the classical world. Great minds from across the world were drawn here to trade in the most valuable of commodities, not gold or slaves or corn, but knowledge. The great library was the bank for this knowledge. Here were gathered together all the writings of the Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, and more. Halls piled to the ceiling with scrolls of mathematics, philosophy, geography, and history, all vying for space with plays, fables, songs, and poems. Today, hardly any of these works survive, and we can only dimly imagine what wonders once lay in Alexandria. But we do know that hidden in its vaults lay the plans for the most extraordinary machines ever created. The Great Library at Alexandria was, I think, the intellectual powerhouse of the ancient world. It was the largest and the best library in the Mediterranean. If you were looking for any particular book, there was always a good chance that you could read it at Alexandria. Attached to the library at Alexandria was an institution called the Museum. Not a museum as we would imagine it, with objects on display in glass cases and cabinets. Museum was a place to muse, to think, to discuss, to invent. Many of the professors in the museum had written the greatest books in the library. Some devoted their energies to figuring out how the world worked, and some spent their time planning, devising, and building inventions. It was here in the museum that Heron set about creating his extraordinary inventions. Today, none of his machines survive, and we know almost nothing about the man himself. But we do know about his marvelous machines, because Heron wrote books on how to build them, and incredibly, copies of some of those books survive. They open a window on the wonderful mechanized world he knew. Stored in one of the modern world's great repositories of knowledge, Oxford University, it is still possible to find a copy of one of Heron's books. It is a rare document which gives a tantalizing glimpse of surprising ancient machines. Although the original is long lost, this 16th century copy can take us straight back into Heron's world.
Within these pages, this master mechanic described his inventions and the sort of places you might find his robotic devices. Some were for the home, some simply there as entertainment for dinner parties. Others whirred and clanked away in theaters, producing amazing special effects. But the most likely place to find one of Heron's machines wasn't in either of those places. It was in the temples. Nowhere in the ancient world was more cosmopolitan than Alexandria. So nowhere had more religions all vying for attention. Today, Islam is the city's main religion. But 2,000 years ago, there were many, many more faiths to choose from. We have to think about in the ancient world that there was stiff competition between different cults. Roman cults, Greek cults, Egyptian cults, cults for political leaders, and, and all sorts of mixes between these. So if you had something special that would attract attention, um, then that would give you an edge in, in, in the market to attract visitors to your temple. In other words, what priests of all these religions needed was magic. And that's just what Heron could provide with fantastic machines, which would appear to move as if commanded by the gods. He would even create automatic temple doors which would open and close when a sacrifice was given to the gods. Heron was using his talents as a magician and showman to trick the ancient worshippers into believing they had witnessed miracles happening in front of their very eyes. Heron is credited with inventing the steam engine during the first century AD, but the Greeks only used it as a novelty. Modern marvels will continue in a moment. One of Heron's most ingenious machines was his automatic temple doors. The idea was simple, but brilliant. As a priest and congregation approached their temple, the doors would magically open to welcome them inside. In front of the huge closed doors of the temple, the priest would theatrically step forward and light a fire on an altar by the doors. Beneath this altar, an amazing array of pipes, containers, and weights would then swing into play unbeknown to the expectant congregation. Water flowed unseen into buckets that counterweighted the huge doors. Above ground, the priest might now make a final offering on the fire as the heat drove the hidden mechanism below. Then suddenly, as the counterweights filled, the doors slowly creaked open as if the gods were pleased with the sacrifice. A fantastic finale was provided by the sounding of a fanfare as the mechanism blew compressed air through a trumpet. To Heron it was simply mechanics, but to the congregation it was a miracle. There could have been few better ways to impress your audience. And there is evidence that even the great temple at Ephesus in Turkey, one of the wonders of the ancient world, may have been fitted with these automatic doors. Steve Poole, a kinetic artist, is fascinated with the work of Heron and has built a scale model to show how the automatic doors actually worked. A cylinder of air is heated using fire. The air inside expands and travels through a tube into a container of water, in this case a red canister. The hot air pushes the water out of the canister and into another container which gradually fills.
The mechanism uses a counterbalance, and when one container fills and drops, another rises, causing the doors to swing open. It is a simple machine, but an extremely effective one, and one which shows Heron had mastered the elemental forces of water, fire, and air. When the altar fire was extinguished, the air cooled and drew water back out of the container, so it rose and closed the doors. Heron invented many temple machines which included these automated moving figures, which made offerings to the temple fire when it was lit. Of course, it was one thing to persuade people to come into your temple, but quite another to persuade them to part with their money. And money was the key to running a successful religion. How to get people to spend it and how to collect it were just two of the problems Heron also had answers for. This is the first, a holy water dispenser. It was the world's first coin-operated slot machine. As people entered the temples, they were required to wash their hands using holy water that had been blessed by the priests. Blessing and selling holy water was time-consuming for the priests, so Heron invented a machine that made their lives easier and was more efficient. When a worshiper placed a drachma coin in the top, out came a precisely measured cup full of expensive but holy water. For the worshippers, it once more looked like a miracle. In reality, the dropping of the coin caused a lever to fall, opening a valve to let out water. those who could see the inside, it was simply another mechanical marvel. But for the eager audience, it was pure magic. In solving the priest's problem of dispensing holy water, Heron had invented the coin-operated vending machine 1,800 years before its modern equivalent was first patented. Other miraculous machines may also have helped to bring in the worshippers, such as this replica in a major exhibition of ancient technology in Athens. This magical Greek device is a smart tap. As water 